So despite the recent volatility in the stock markets caused by the Omicron variant and its potential impact here in the United States, the stock markets are now reaching again all new highs. Weekly claims for unemployment benefits in the United States fell last week to a new low and at 184,000 applications, adjusted seasonally, it is the lowest number since 1969. Most of the news you see points to things are better than ever, right? I'm not sure it actually feels that way though. In fact, according to the federal government's Bureau of Labor and Statistics, inflation rose in October by 0.9%. And based on the previous 12 months, it brings inflation to 6.2% for the year. The recent changes this year raises some serious questions. Is inflation going to keep going up? Are the numbers produced by the federal government even reliable? And if inflation is just as bad as it looks or potentially worse, how does that change how I invest my money? You guys know how much I never wanna waste your time and I always wanna deliver massive value with every video I put out. So without further delay, Let's get started. Okay, first off here, what is inflation exactly and how is it calculated here? Put very simply, inflation is the measure of just how much the cost of goods and services available here in the United States rise over time. Now, how is this measured? Well, in a perfect world, every single product and service that is sold here would be measured every single month to see exactly how much the price changes over time. But in reality, this is not feasible. As a result, the federal government's Bureau of Labor and Statistics has what's called the Consumer Price Index, which actually started back in 1913. The Consumer Price Index measures a, what's considered a basket of goods and services and measures how much those prices change over time. At least that's how it started. The Consumer Price Index is used in a multitude of ways by the federal government, ranging from federal tax brackets to the change in how much social security benefits somebody receives year over year. And it's also used as a leading economic indicator and it's part of the calculation for the gross domestic product, GDP. The truth of the matter here, as you can see on the graph, is inflation is going to be there no matter what over time. Sometimes it's just a small amount year over year. Other times there are significant changes in inflation. So I think most people just assume that the inflation as measured by the federal government is accurate. But the truth of the matter is there is some controversy over how inflation is calculated. Let's start off here with a very simple statement. The federal government is in charge of measuring inflation. Let me ask you, is that a good idea? We've got a federal government who stands to benefit, if we're being honest here, stands to benefit from low inflation rates. Now that might sound confusing, but let me give you an example. Let's hypothetically say that there was a city out there that needed to measure whether or not they had enough police officers. And so they went ahead and they wanted to measure how much crime was happening in the city. And so they decided to hire a third party to measure that crime rate. They decided to hire the mafia. And the mafia did their research and their studies and they found out that huh, there's no crime, so we don't need any more police officers. That sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But the truth is the mafia has a vested interest in this example of having no crime because if there's no crime, there's no need for more police officers and that is beneficial to them. What I'm trying to say here is that when you have one party that stands to benefit from a specific result and they are also in charge of calculating the result, that's kind of a conflict of interest. The federal government benefits wildly when inflation numbers are low or normal. And more importantly, there are significant consequences if the measure of inflation is really high. There have been changes in how the consumer price index has been calculated over time. The original way that the consumer price index was calculated was there was a specific basket of goods and services. There are millions of different things that are sold every day here in the United States, but there was a specific sample that was used and that sample didn't change every single year, which I think is a pretty accurate way to measure the increase of cost over time. One of the big changes that has occurred in how we calculate the consumer price index is no longer do we measure just that specific goods and services basket. Instead, we measure changes in consumer preferences as well as how to maintain a standard of living over time. And I could get into the weeds here, but I probably would confuse myself with some of the data and I definitely would confuse you guys, but it involves substitution bias as well as the changes in quality of improvements of products over time as well. All of that to say that inflation as is measured is up for debate. And it's very possible that the actual real inflation rate experienced by you and me is much higher than is actually measured in the consumer price index. If you think about how much you pay for energy, 
whether it's gas at the pump or for gas or heating or electric, what it costs to pay for cars, what it costs to buy a home versus what it used to pay in the past. We know that inflation is much higher than we see just in the consumer price index. Now, to be clear, I am not an inflation guru by any sense of the imagination. I am not a conspiracy theorist. I am just looking at the data and the logic. One podcast that I found extremely helpful in understanding some of the basic elements to how the changes to the CPI have happened over time is is Peter Schiff's podcast. I will link to it in the description below. A few of his podcasts are really good. He definitely has a strong opinion, but I found it very informative for how things have changed over time. No matter where you land on how inflation is calculated or whether you agree with CPI or CPIU versus CPIW, the biggest question we need to consider here is, what do we do now? There are so many different strategies we could take in how we invest our money, anywhere from holding it all in cash and putting it underneath the mattress, all the way to YOLOing into cryptocurrency. And there's a lot of strategies in between there. The following is just my own opinion, guys. These are some of the things I'm thinking of personally with how I invest my money, given all this information. Am I holding it all in cash? Absolutely not. I figured you might know that though. I do have some cash, right? I have an emergency fund that is invested, but I also have cash on hand. I do recommend having a certain level of cash on hand, even though cash is one of the worst things you can hold when there is high inflation, because we need to be able to take advantage of opportunities, whether it be in the stock market or in real estate. And we just need to have a cushion in case things go crazy in our own personal lives. Two strong recommendations that always pop up when it comes to battling inflation are investing in I bonds and tips. Both of these investments are adjusted based on the inflation rate, again, calculated by the consumer price index. So if you believe that the consumer price index is 100% accurate, then this might be a great way for you to diversify your money. I didn't want to make this video about how to invest in tips or I-bonds, so I did link down in the description below to a few great resources if you'd like to learn more about how to do that. Personally though, I have no money invested in tips or I-bonds, and I don't have any immediate plans to do so in the future. Investing in the stock market, absolutely. This is something that I think is a great way for the average Joe to just continue continue trucking along. Is the stock market overvalued? Yeah, probably a little bit. Do I think that the stock market is probably going to adjust downward when the Federal Reserve stops investing so much into the markets? Absolutely, I think that's going to happen. But I do think that the stock market, for the average job out there, is one of the best ways that we can, over the long term, not short term, right, because we know that there are short term fluctuations in the market, over the long term, it is one of the best ways for the average Joe to battle inflation and grow their money. A low cost index fund, such as Vanguard's S&P 500, or their total stock market index fund, great options for you to get started and to grow your money over time. I also love owning dividend stocks during times like this because I know that strong companies, even when the markets go crazy, will still continue to pay out a dividend and grow that dividend over time. Real estate. This is one, guys, that I've had a change of heart on. I own my own home and it's rapidly increased in value, which is insane to think about over the past 12 months. But when it comes to owning rental real estate, this is something that I'm really going to be dipping my toes in. Among all the different options available, real estate is one that holds its value well. No matter what happens in the markets, no matter what happens here in the United States, no matter who gets elected president in the next four years, we know that people will always prioritize where they live. Besides battling inflation, rental properties have significant benefits, including the renter paying your mortgage, increases in the value of your property over time and significant tax benefits. I don't plan on buying any properties here in the state of California, A, because it's so wildly expensive to buy here. And to be completely honest, I don't see our family resettling here in the state of California after our RV trip is over. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below, guys. I know that this video didn't go deep into any of the details, but that is by design because I don't consider myself to be an expert on inflation. I've just really shared with you some of the things that I've learned over time and things that I've been researching lately. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this video. What other things you'd like for me to cover here in the future? That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day and please continue to stay healthy both physically and financially. Have a good one.